Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for inviting me to be here with this incredible group. My name is Brittany Torres, and I'm really glad to be able to share some work with you from a recent qualitative study examining the racialized consequences of objectivity in academia. So as many of us know, objectivity or the personal detachment of ourselves from our work is a really powerful but often taken for granted norm in academia. Right? It's something that we're told increases our scientific rigor and the quality of our work, our credibility as scholars. And what objectivity functionally does, it serves to minimize the centrality of our lived experiences and values in the research process. Right, but one issue with this is that academia, like all organizations, is an inherently racialized place. Right? And this means that the perspectives and values that we see as normative, default, neutral, status quo are the perspectives and values of the dominant racial group. And this means that the perspectives and values of scholars of color that they bring to bear in their work is often seen as deviant, less neutral, less objective. And as I'll show you in this work, this means that scholars of color are often met with objectivity interrogations or interrogations intended to suggest that their work falls short of objective standards. But what I also find, and I'll show you, is that in response, scholars of color engage in this process I call objectivity armoring, or really using these different types of self-presentational techniques in order to enhance perceptions of their objectivity and really try to increase their persistence in academia. So what I'm going to show you are just um, a few results from an interview study with scholars in psychology and management studying race. And I'll show you a few of the themes that came up in the inductive coding with scholars of color, but happy to talk more data later. So as I mentioned, one big theme that came up were these objectivity interrogations. And I want to give you kind of a flavor of what that looks like. One of these types of interrogations is ideological pushback. This is pushback that's really meant to implicate a scholar's position in relation to a presumed ideological agenda. So I'll show you an example from one of my scholars who's describing their tenure review process, and they say, so at the time of my review, it was represented that at least one person suggesting more than one person questioned whether my research could ever be viewed as truly world-class science because of the ideologies behind them. And they say, if I ever open that file, I boil over with rage at it. Right, so this quote really highlights one, that flavor of ideological pushback, but also kind of the real emotional consequences of contending with this pushback. But as I mentioned, another theme that came up is that in response to these chronic interrogations, scholars engage in this process of objectivity armoring, right? These different techniques to enhance perceptions of their objectivity. So one of these is kind of toning down or constraint. And this is when scholars really try to soften or tone down their language in order to really try to assuage some sort of perceived threat in their audience. So the scholars describing their experience of preparing to go on the job market and they get feedback from their committee. And they say, so they gave me feedback on how to present the topic better and clearer, so it won't sound as harsh. So instead of saying modern racism all the time, you can switch it to say bias sometimes or prejudice sometimes. Because if you're constantly repeating racism, racism, that can make people <laughs> uneasy, right? So um, there's this toning down, there's this employment of euphemisms in order to soften, in order to make people, certain people, feel more comfortable. Another form of armoring is over-preparation. This is something very familiar to me, really <laughs> increasing a lot of uh, self-scrutiny and preparation for exposing their work to people. So the scholars describing their experience of preparing to speak at a conference, and they say, it's a lot of anticipating. Like, I walked through every slide, and I'm like, what on this slide are they going to ask me about? Because I don't want to be discredited on any part of anything, which is a waste of mental things, I think, and I think it's unnecessary at a certain point. Right, so this is something that's excessive, it's cognitively taxing, but ultimately done in the service of being perceived as more credible. <laughs> Finally, quantification, another form of armoring, involves using these really rigorous statistical and analytical techniques in order to try to buffer one's work from scrutiny. So the scholar says, you know, I'm going to do clean, strong work, and they can't challenge that part. They can say I disagree, they can say I don't really like it, but they can't say your methods were flawed, or you didn't have a big enough sample, or the analyses were suspect, or you didn't pre-register, none of that. Right? So it's really engaging in all of these different techniques in order to ensure that their work is buffered from scrutiny on the back end. So unfortunately, this is just a super small percentage of the data. It's just a little glimpse of what's here. I hope it gives you kind of a sense of the richness in the qualitative data here. But um, there's a lot more going on. There's different types of interrogations. There's different type of armoring techniques. There's these really different patterns that emerge between white scholars and scholars of color. So any and all of this, happy to talk more about with you later today. Or please feel free to get in touch. So, thank you.